So I hope everybody is doing well out there. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, a topic that I find kind of interesting and somewhat funny um, is, uh, do you have a tool addiction? Are you uh, quote unquote addicted to buying tools? Because if you take a look around on YouTube, uh, it's not uncommon to find uh, channel names like you know, tool addict, tool junkie, some type of reference to having an addiction to buying tools. And I thought that was kind of funny. And when I see stuff like that, you know, I look at myself in the mirror and I ask myself, am I addicted to buying tools? Do I overbuy tools? And I really think about that and I'm critical and I'm honest with myself. Uh, in some cases, there are tools that I look at online and I just want it, you know. Do I know the value of that tool? Yes, I, I do know the value of that tool. Can I get by without that tool? Absolutely. Uh, so I wanted to talk about this uh, when, when uh, thinking about making this video, I went and asked my wife uh, a question because uh, I made a video not too long ago called Why Do uh, uh, Auto Technicians buy so many ratchets. Uh, any auto technician um, that's been doing this 10 years plus will probably have a drawer probably just full of ratchets. And where does this come from? Why, why do we buy so many ratchets as auto technicians? So in that video, I just went through each ratchet that I had and I explained the benefits to having those ratchets. I'll leave a card somewhere up here or a link in the description Go and check that video out. I think you'll like that video. But I got some comments in that video that I thought were interesting, particularly one, uh, uh, a guy mentioned, why do women buy so many purses or buy so many shoes? It could be like that saying, you know, sort of just buying even though you don't need it. So I went and asked my wife, like I mentioned, I went and asked my wife, uh, why do women buy so, so many things that they don't use? Why do you have so many purses, shoes, and just clothes in your closet? Because I'm pretty sure any guy watching this right now, you could go look in your closet right now on your side and go look on your wife's side and you'll see on her side there's far more stuff uh, than you have on your side. And your stuff, you probably wear all of that stuff. If there's something you don't wear, it's probably because you either gained weight or lost weight and can't fit it, or you just haven't got around to throwing it out, or maybe you only wear it when you get dirty and do yard work or something like that. But we have stuff specifically uh, that we will wear, whereas you look on your wife's side and you think about what she normally wears and you're like, why do you have all this stuff if you're never gonna wear it? So the answer she gave me when I asked her this question was, a lot of women will buy uh, with the just in case mindset. If she said, if you ever decide to take me out, you know, somewhere real, real nice, you know, I have this and this purse or whatever and these shoes to match. I have something in case you ever decide to take me out somewhere really nice or we decide to go here, I got that, we decide to do this, I got that, or whatever the case may be. They have things just in case a situation arises, they're ready for it uh, clothing-wise. So I thought about that and it made a lot of sense because uh, a lot of us guys, if you are honest, we do the same thing. We buy a lot of stuff with a just in case mentality. And we think, now, I'm not going to be caught off guard if this happens. I got this tool. I can get this done. Or, you know, I'm going to buy this just in case that rare moment happens. You know, I don't have to stop what I'm doing. I can just go to my toolbox, pull it out, and keep working. So I think a lot of us do that too. And I'm no exception. If you go and look in my Amazon cart right now, there's quite a few tools on there that I know that I don't have that I would like to have. And this is sort of a tricky area because uh, when you are a, a blue collar worker, uh, if you've been working in your specific trade for a really long time and you've become very skilled and very confident at it, 
you tend to buy more tools because really, there's really nothing you can't tackle. And whatever comes your way, uh, you want to be able to have the right tool to be able to handle whatever situation comes your way. And you really don't know, you know, what problems you might, you know, encounter. Uh, if you're an auto technician, long time uh, auto technician, you may get some European cars that start coming in and you're like, okay, well, then you might start buying some European stuff or tools to be able to work on that. That happened to me uh, when I became self-employed. You got these owners that own European vehicles that really can't afford uh, to repair them. And so they look for alternative ways to try to save a buck uh, because a lot of these cars, they don't understand that 80,000 miles is really the end of the lifespan of a Mercedes-Benz. 100,000 miles, that's like 300,000 miles for a Mercedes. And a lot of BMWs are that way too. They start leaking everywhere and it's just so much work to try to repair all these leaks on these European vehicles that uh, a lot of them just can't really afford it. So I started taking a lot of these uh, uh, jobs and uh, worked on a lot of European uh, vehicles, you know, pulling the motors out and resealing everything and putting them back in and, uh, you know, giving people another, you know, hopefully 40,000 miles. But I had to buy different tools to be able to do that. Lots of inverted torque stuff, uh, lots of, you know, inverted torque wrenches, 16, a lot of 16 millimeter stuff, a lot of 11 millimeter stuff, different odd sizes, better scan tools uh, to be able to uh, get access to information. So um, as you get more skilled in whatever specific uh, trade you happen to be in, you end up buying more tools. Now that was just one example. Uh, that can extend a bit further uh, in two different ways. Uh, for one, when you do get confident in whatever trade you happen to be in, that can go anywhere because you just get comfortable working with your hands, you develop a certain knowledge of how things work in general. Um, you know, I fix a lot of things. You know, I fix my stove, uh, I fix, you know, my dryer, uh, done work around the house, I've hung drywall, uh, you know, repaired fences, doing all this type of stuff only because working as a, you know, an auto tech for so long that you just get comfortable period working with your hands and you start to just know how things work and you know how to get information if you're not sure about what the problem is to fix whatever it is you're trying to fix or build or what have you so then you end up buying more tools uh you know i have one two three i have three toolboxes here in this garage two dedicated strictly for uh auto repair and one just for like home improvement stuff, home repairs and things like that. So, and I know it goes the same for other trades, other guys who could be in the construction trades or, you know, a handyman or HVAC guy, they get confident as well and they get a vehicle that might have a leaky radiator or a leaky water pump. Granted, that's not in-depth stuff, but they have enough confidence in themselves to do that repair because of the work that they typically do on HVAC stuff or building homes, you know? So they'll end up having certain mechanic tools and we'll have some of their tools, they'll have some of our tools, and then you end up with all these tools. So again, can you get addicted to buying tools? Uh, the answer is yes, you can. And again, I talked about this being sort of a tricky area because you do truly never know when you might need that tool. And so you buy it, but you can start to overbuy or you can just start to look at a tool uh, and just sort of lust over it for lack of a better word. And then you end up buying it and you put it in the, you know, the, your, your toolbox and you're happy you got it and you barely even use it. And that could just continue to just go on and on. And how many ratchets do you need before you satisfy? You know, how many uh, socket sets do you need before you satisfy? How many welders do you need? How many saws do you need? How many sets of screwdrivers do you need? Uh, so it can get to the point where you start buying stuff and then you got repeats. And to me, 
that's when it starts to get into the area where, okay, maybe you might have a bit of a problem if you're starting to buy the same stuff that you already have. However, you can end up with multiple tools. If you are in a trade and you work with tools all day, it's inevitable. You will end up with, you know, the same tool multiple times and it just sort of happens. Uh, before I show you a quick demo and sort of explain how that's possible, I just want to touch on that that's not always a bad idea. In my case, uh, some of my extra stuff that I had at home, because I would have all my tools at my place of business, but I would also have a, a pretty stock, you know, tool cart at home because I would do, you know, work at home too and I didn't have to go to the shop. Whether I was changing my oil, changing my wife's oil, doing brakes at home, uh, or whatever. A family member may need some repair work and I'd rather them drop it off at my house than to clog up my shop because I need that space for paying customers. Let's face it, family members aren't really paying. So that type of stuff that I, you know, I did at home. So in a case like that, you know, it was beneficial for me to have some stuff at home. So because I have that stuff at home, now if I combine them, now I got multiples of a lot of stuff. And right now I no longer uh, have the auto repair business that I used to run. Now all that stuff is combined and I got like triples and doubles and stuff. And it just sort of happens over time. So let's go over here to my workbench. I'm gonna show you a couple tools and show you how it's sort of easy to end up having doubles and triples. Okay guys, so what I got in front of you here are all 10 millimeter uh, 3H drive deep sockets. Uh, with the exception to that one there on the end, that's a, a mid deep. All right, so why do I have all of these? And this is sort of the point that I was making earlier that uh, it's not always that you're just buying repeats because you want to just be buying repeats uh, because you have some sort of tool addiction. But you can just acquire tools from working, you know, whatever trade you're working in. You will just end up having a bunch of tools. And sometimes it could just happen not necessarily premeditated. And that's why I got this here. I'm going to uh, uh, sort of uh, show you what I mean. So we'll start here. This is a 10 millimeter impact socket, but it's different than this 10 millimeter impact socket because it's a 12 point. And I remember buying this uh, 12 point because uh, when doing clutch jobs, I would have, always have to pull out a chrome uh, 12 point socket to be able to get flywheels off and pressure plates and drive shafts and things like that. And I wanted to be able to get uh, a 12 point on a 3H drive so it's a little smaller, give me more access to get in there. And not every 12 point bolt is that big. They could be eight millimeter, 10 millimeter. So I wanted a 3H drive 12 point set. Now, of course, you sh I still need my uh, 3H drive six point. And this socket has seen lots of use because uh, I definitely want to use this on my impact gun over using these chromes. So that's why I got this set. So both of these are Technon sockets, 10 millimeter. One's an old version, one's their newer version. This one uh, I used at my home set. This one I didn't use at work as well. This actually goes into a set that I leave in my truck under my seat. So this is a part of a complete set that I pulled out but it is another 10 millimeter that I have. This one is a deep set that, or a deep socket that I will use when I'm working right here in a garage. If, if I'm doing some type of repair, uh, that 10 millimeter right there will get used. This is a genius. Now in this icon, this may be the only 10 millimeter that doesn't need to be here. I bought that strictly out of curiosity when icon tools first launched from Harbor Freight. I wanted to see what the big deal was about Icon Tools. So I bought it just to see if it had the same quality as tool truck brands like they claim. So I bought it to, you know, to see for myself. Uh, it, uh, of course it doesn't, but I now have that socket. Now this 10 millimeter is a Mac and I bought this set years ago and 
probably I bought this in probably like 2003 this Mac tool set and at that time period I got a lot of my tools stolen and there was just random sockets in my drawer after they ransacked it and there was only a few you know Mac sockets left and this happened to be one of those and I still have it uh, I'm not going to throw it away so I still have it and then this uh, mid deep is a snap on that I just needed a mid deep set so I bought it so when you blind all these up it looks like wow why do I have all of these 10 millimeter um, uh, sockets 3 8 drive when I don't necessarily need all of that it could look like I'm over buying but it's not I just sort of acquired it through the years so that's uh, one point so then also I got some uh, 3 8 drive swivels and uh, so there's four here now a point that I want to make on a tool like this is a tool like this uh, it's just a good idea to have a lot of these it's so easy to break a universal or it's so easy to misplace one of these universals that if I was to just have one of these and I didn't have all four and I'm in a really involved job and I set this down but and I do something else but the job is so in, involved that it's taking all of my focus now I don't remember where I set this yeah it's probably right there on the windshield or on the cow but I can't find it now I'm searching around I'm looking around do I really want to stop what I'm doing to hunt for the swivel now that I need it again for the next part of disassembly or assembly or whatever I'm doing no, I really don't have time for that. I'll find it after the job is over. I'll just go and grab my other swivel and keep moving. So in a lot of cases, it is a good idea to have a multiple tools uh, or also if that tool broke while I was working, I'll also have another one. And swivels are inexpensive enough to where you could have several of them, you know, just as a safety net. All right, so I got two ratchets here. I uh, wanted to make my point even further that, you know, having multiples doesn't always necessarily mean that you're overbuying or that it's a bad idea. Sometimes it's a great idea to have multiples of the same. So this one's a snap-on um, 3 h drive ratchet. And this is, you know, the real deal, so to speak. And this is a Pittsburgh. This is a knockoff. Uh, this one so this is this is my real ratchet I, I really get work done with this ratchet this is you know what I really turn to uh, when I want to bust a fastener loose this ratchet has seen quite a bit of use I love this ratchet this is a high quality ratchet all right this ratchet on the other hand although it's not a bad ratchet it actually is surprisingly pretty good uh it's shocked me when i first bought it uh you know because at that time harbor freight didn't have anything that they consider professional and so i bought this again sort of out of curiosity too uh to see if it really is sort of a professional grade it's pretty close I wouldn't say it's as great as some of the more professional ratchets, but it's pretty close. Close enough to where if you use this ratchet, you won't be disappointed. However, I have two of these. Which one of these you think is going to the junkyard? It's definitely not this snap on. Which one of these you think is going to get loaned out? It's definitely not going to be this snap on. Or if I'm going out on a job, maybe to do something mobile, maybe I'm going to a, a family member's house, a friend's house, or someone that I know who, uh, you know, wants me to come over and, and help them out with something, and I pack a little toolkit, I'm taking this one. All right, I'm not going to take this one. This one doesn't leave the toolbox. This one doesn't leave the shop. This one stays for the obvious reasons. All right, so let's say maybe there's a really stubborn bolt you want to get off and, you know, the half inch drive won't fit. The head on the breaker bar is too big. Uh, so you need something with a little more slimmer access and this got a nice long handle on it. Uh, but you think maybe this bolt is kind of stubborn. It might actually pop the ratchet. It might break. It might, you know, cause some type of damage to the ratchet. Which one of these you think I'm going to sacrifice? Uh, it's going to be this one. 
All right, it's definitely not gonna be my snap on. I wanna keep wrenching with this one. I don't want this ratchet to be down. I don't care if this ratchet goes down. I can live without this one. You know, can't live without this one. So in an event like that, it's not necessarily bad to have multiples. So as you can see in that little example, there are some cases where you will start accumulating tools over time and it's not necessarily because uh, you just buy it habitually, but just throughout the course of years, you just acquire tools, uh, sort of like I mentioned, or it's a good idea to have a tool set at home versus one at work, or it's better to have some you know, cheaper stuff that's uh, you know, multiples, but it's cheaper that you don't care if you lend out or you take to the junkyard, or things like that, or you don't care if it breaks. So it is a good idea sometimes to have multiple tools and to buy you know, tools for that case. But again, there is a fine line and we do tend to overbuy. I'm no exception. I do it as well. There's plenty of tools that I don't have that I still want. And let's be honest, I'm probably going to buy them. So I guess that makes me addicted to buying tools too. Hey, it is what it is. This is Brian916. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys on the next one. Like the cool blue light 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 Like the cool blue light